Hi, everyone, and welcome to our webinar Wednesday. For those of you who are new to our webinar series, Acumen likes to host biweekly webinars on Sage Intact and Sage 300 to keep you up to date on the latest news, tips and tricks, and third-party add-ons that can help benefit your Sage software. Uh, today, we brought in our Sage Intact Practice Director, Nick DeBosney, and he will be going over the latest tips, tricks, and tools for Sage Intact. But before he, uh, he goes over the agenda, please note that this webinar is in listen-only mode. And if you have any questions, then please write them in the chat option, and we will answer them near the end of the presentation. Uh, we have plenty to cover today, so I will now pass it on to Nick. Hi, Stephen, and uh, welcome everyone to uh, webinar Wednesday. <clears throat> uh, did a brief introduction. I, I can see by the attendees, I know most everyone on the call. Uh, my name is Nick Nabosny. I'm the Intech Practice Director here at Acumen. Um, we're going to go through a series of uh, slides and switch back and forth to Intech and take a look at some of these things and talk about a few tips and tricks that uh, we've learned over the years and, and uh, you know the number of times we've rolled this out uh, and, and some of the new features that Intech has brought into the mix with the quarterly, quarterly releases. And then also take a look and talk about some Acumen tools, things that our development team here at Acumen has done to improve efficiencies, especially with like importing data, getting data into the system uh, uh, faster. And then lastly, we'll save some time for a Q&A at the end. Now, the goal for today is to really go through these tips. Uh, I'm gonna go fairly quickly so we can cover most of them. Uh, I'm going to review them uh, and show you as much as I can, but some of them will be, uh, you know, are going to need a little bit more time on, on your end to kind of look at, read through. And certainly, if you get stuck on anything or want us to help you, by all means, reach out to us. Uh, we'll give you contact information at the end and uh, talk to your account manager, and we can schedule some one-on-one -on -one time uh, with you to make sure you can get this set up. Okay, so let's get uh, right into it here. And so... The first thing I want to talk about are user preferences in Intact, uh, because we get lots of questions about this. So when you log into the system, you can control a number of different things. You can control where you start. Is it on a dashboard? Is it in the general ledger? Is it on the home screen so you can easily switch from entity to entity? Uh, you can control uh, when the system times out. You can control what your menus look like. Uh, you can control the number of rows and pages. So if you're doing long sales orders and you want to not have pages after every five rows where you got to go next, 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 you can set that to be maybe a thousand rows so you don't have to do that. Okay, let's take a look. So I'll bring over Intech. Stephen, can we see Intech? Okay. Yes, looks good on my side. Okay, so I'm logged in here to one of my sample companies as Joanna Drake. So I'm gonna go click on my name and go to my preferences here. Now, again, this is just me. I'm only changing this for Joanna at this time. This doesn't affect anyone else's user experience. Up at the top is my general information, name, address, all that contact information. I have my security uh, preferences here so I can have a backup or custom security question. So if I ever forget my password, I can be prompted for that. Here's that timeout that we talked about where I can say, okay, um, inactivity duration, you know, I want to set that to two hours, three hours, four hours, and, and you may have a corporate policy on that, but here's where you can change that. And then an individual session, if it's open for a period of time, you may be able to uh, <clears throat> log it out after 12 hours, even if, if something is going on in the system. You can come here to change your password. Uh, of course, if you're set up so that it automatically reminds you to do that, that will happen automatically, uh, but you can come here to change it at any point uh, if you need to. Um, if you have approvals turned on in hey, the hey, system is, and you say routing around. Is there a way to actually make the font bigger? Is there a way you could zoom in a little bit on the Sage Intact? Is that a little bit better? I think so, yeah, that should be good. Thanks. Okay, so if you have approvals turned on in your system, 
um, and you're routing bills around for approval or routing purchase orders or journal entries around for approval, but you're not getting the notifications. That's probably because you need to turn that on in your preferences. So you may be, you may be perfectly configured in accounts payable and you may not be seeing the bill notifications. Uh, you need to make sure you turn that on here in your preferences. Um, here, my start page, right? We talked about starting uh, at the home screen or starting, maybe I've run reports all day long and I'd like to start at the report center or uh, I go right into sales order entry to process orders. I might start there instead of on a dashboard. So you can control exactly where you start with the system, uh, whichever module you wanna be in or whichever reporting area or whichever dashboard you'd like to start with. If you do select the dashboard, then of course you get you know a choice of any of the dashboards that you have security access to do and see, and you can set them up there. Now, another thing, this is a very small thing, but I like to um, set different colors for my companies here so that I can tell visually that I'm in a different entity when I move into a different entity. I even like to do, you know, sometimes I'll do red for my test database and a different color for my production database. So I can very easily see that it uh, is a different entity there. And, um, you know, again, visually, I know that I'm working in a different company. And then lastly, down here, <clears throat> where we can arrange your menu. So in the drop down here where I have budgets, company, global consolidations, platform, if you like or want to have that in a different order, I can come in here and just say, okay, I'd like to have GL at the top and then I do payable and then I do receivables and you can drag and drop those uh, in the order that you would like and set them up and of course save that change and it will save those preferences for when you log into the system again, or I can refresh it to have those system or set, have those settings take place. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here so we can see the whole thing. Okay, next let's talk about some data entry shortcuts. Okay, there's a lot here. Um, this webinar is going to be posted on our YouTube channel and, and we'd be happy to send you these slides so you can have these kind of um, these lists of these data entry shortcuts. They are all actually in the help in intact. So you absolutely can find them in there. Uh, if you type in keyboard shortcuts in the help center in intact, you'll get this full list as well. But these are things that uh, we've kind of used and found and, and trained on over the years to help clients move faster through the data entry screens, right? And one of the ones where you have to grab the mouse or, or you're tempted to grab the mouse most frequently are the dates and the calendars. So you can use these control home, page up, page down, control left and right, uh, the enter, the escape button, to move around a calendar uh, to select dates when you're say doing an AP bill, okay? So we're gonna look at that in just a moment. But then also if you're in a date field and you don't necessarily need to open the calendar to pick a specific date in the middle of a week or a middle of a month, you just want beginning of the year, or end of the year, beginning of the month, end of the month, beginning of the week, end of the week. You know, you can use these letters, these shortcut keys to actually automatically put in those dates. Let's take a look at that in Intact here. If we go to accounts payable and we start a new bill here and we tab through, here's a date field, right? If I wanted to say, okay, I want that to be the beginning of the year, I can hit Y to do that. Or I wanna say, you know, T for today, uh, I want K end of this current week is, is 12-4. So those are really quick shortcuts to, to move um, through a date field. But if I want to, I can also do control home and pull up the calendar. And I can na navigate through that with control right and left, control up and down to change months, to change days and, and enter to return that. So again, trying to keep you away from the mouse, right? Because that, that does slow us down when we're doing a fair amount of data entry and, and using keystrokes that can be memorized and, and also entered a little bit faster 
to make things uh, you know, a bit more efficient as we're going through the system and doing this data entry. Okay, next thing we wanna talk about is data entry with records, right? So as I'm doing a transaction and I finish that bill, I might wanna save it. I might wanna save it and post it or start a new record. I might wanna cancel it because I, I made a mistake and I wanna just start from scratch or, or go back from an error page. I, I tried to post it and an error came up and I wanna close that. Again, um, you can do all of this with the mouse, right? But these are just keyboard shortcuts to help you stay away from the mouse and slow you down and, and try to you know, grab that mouse and, and find where it is, is it, which monitor is it on, <laughs> drag it over and, and enter that, uh, you know, close that menu say. Spacebar allow me to, to clear a checkbox or, or check a checkbox in the system. And then Alt-D allows me to open a new browser window. Sometimes that's helpful if I wanna look at say two different things in the same in-tech company at the same time, I can launch more than one browser window to kind of duplicate that window. So let's take a look what I mean about. So we'll go back to in -tech here for a moment. So <clears throat> if I have a vendor in here, I'll go ahead and select Cisco Foods. I'm going to populate from my last bill, which is a tip and trick in itself. I don't see people using that enough because it did pull everything through for me. And I certainly can just go ahead and update that if I need to. But if I do Control S, it's going to save that for me. Oh, excuse me, Alt S, it's going to save that for me or submit it in my case because I have workflow turned on. If I want to do, um, you know, Alt Q to cancel this particular one and go back to the, the list view where I can add a new one or look at an existing one, I can cancel that. And then, you know, tab and, and shift tab obviously are moving from field to field, right? I'm sure you use that all the time, but we don't always see people doing shift tab to go backwards if I happen to pass the actual, um, field that, I'm, that I wanted to select and I got shift tab and, and move backwards, I can do that as well. Okay, <clears throat> so data entry shortcuts are again, very simple things, but uh, something that if you take the time to memorize, take the time to practice, can really speed you up as you're doing sales orders, accounts payable bills, uh, you know, long journal entries as you're going through the grid here with a, a number of different uh, rows on an order again, right? And see, I have mine set to six here. If I wanted a hundred rows here, I can have a hundred rows in the entry. So I don't have to page more if I want to, or, or add a bunch of rows if I usually do longer, more complex transactions. The next thing we'll talk about is collaborate. So collaborate is a, uh, a way to really speed up your internal communication so that things like sharing information, keeping up to date with the latest developments on maybe a particular customer or project can happen in real time. Uh, you don't have to switch really between Intact, uh, Salesforce or, or Outlook or email, whatever you use for email to kind of catch up on relevant information. You can keep it right in Intact. It can be real time. You can you can share screenshots of things. You can attach pictures or files. You can mention different users. You can build groups of, of users or teams in the system so that multiple people can be notified at once about really anything, a customer, a project, a report, results on a dashboard. So let's take a look and I'll, I'll show you a few examples of how you can use Collaborate in the system. So we're gonna start with going into the collaboration center, uh, which is up at the top here. It looks like a little message box. And if I click on that, I can see my latest feed here with all of the things that are showing up that uh, either I follow or someone has communicated to me or I've made a comment on. So this is things that are directly uh, related to me. But if I click on this green arrow here, the uh, green area, excuse me, I can go into the collaboration center. The collaboration center is broken up into different sections. So the what I follow section is, is really updates for anything that I follow. Again, anything that has been mentioned about me, commented to me, uh, anything that I've commented on or any 
things that I've ticked the box to say, I'd like to follow this. I want to follow this customer. I want to follow this project. I want to follow this group. I want to follow this uh, GL account. I, I want to know anytime something's happening with a revenue account or something like that. So um, you can choose to select as, as much and, and follow, excuse me, as much as you'd like. Uh, but in here, in the collaboration center, I can look at it that way. I can look at things that are specifically posted to me or that I've posted on or I've commented on. If I have rights, I can see the entire company, everything that's going on, all public groups, um, you know, posts that are made from um, anyone that, that is set as public, I'd be able to see here with all company. And then I can see specific groups, specific people, specific files, where I might make, make a group called accounting, where there are three users in the accounting group, myself and, and Joanna Drake, and also Drew Jackson, who uh, reports to Joanna on the uh, fake Acumen, Acumen Hospitality team here in my sample data environment. So I use collaborate a lot, right? It's a, it's a change in mindset. It's a really a way to get away from outlook, right? Get, get the discipline of just communicating here in the system and, and it's real time. So let's take a look at a bill, right? And the way I'm gonna do that actually is I wanna show you one more piece of collaborate where I tend to like to put it on my dashboard. So I have a sample dashboard here and one of the components that I've included on my dashboard here is my collaboration feed. So I can see here, okay, I could quickly post something. I can attach a file or a link or a snapshot, but we'll go there in just a moment. But I can also scroll through very quickly uh, and see, oh, okay, I said, please get this paid. So let's click on this because in one click now, I can navigate to this particular AP bill or this journal entry or this sales order entry, whatever it is, right? And if I scroll down to the bottom, I can see this entire communication, this, this conversation we've been having about this particular invoice. When I go in, if I wanted to mention someone, I can use the at sign just like I do on social media. And I'd say at Drew. And I feel like every demo I yell at Drew here to get this paid. <laughs> and I'll share that, right? If I wanted to, I could attach a file. I can browse out and choose a file that I want to include here for him. Say, you know, here's the um, here's the payment approval that's been signed off. Go ahead and, and process this, or maybe I want to link to a particular website in here so that they can see it. So someone can see uh, the, the currency conversion rate at the time or, or a link to uh, uh, the vendor portal where I can see the quote for this particular uh, bill if it's related in some way, shape or form. So I can track, you know, documents in here, comments in here and everything in, in real time in the system. Now, if I go back to the dashboard for a moment, another thing I really like to do in Collaborate is you can actually use this to make notes and comments on reports, right? So here I have a, a sample income statement report, right? Or a sample cash flow report. Well, one of the neat things I can do with Collaborate, and I can do the same thing from the Collaborate Center. And you can see now I have a little notification uh, button here that says a one because I have a new uh, comment in, in what I feed, right? There's a new entry in the system, but I can come here and go take a snapshot. So I can take a snapshot of any of the widgets on my dashboard, components, excuse me. I can take a snapshot of the uh, reports on my dashboard. So I'm just going to go ahead and select my income statement. I want to ask Drew to take a look at this because something doesn't look right to me. Okay, so it has taken a snapshot of that report for me. And what I can do here that's sometimes missed is, is click on the edit button. And when I do that, I have the ability to open up this editor tool where I might wanna say, okay, uh, take a look at this section. You know, it, it doesn't look correct. Um, you know, that's fine. That's what I wanna put in there. We'll save our changes. And then down here underneath that, I can say at Drew, please correct uh, the following section for me by Monday. 
share. So I can make comments that are now going back and forth about reports in the system, again, all in real time. Okay, the next thing we'll talk about, the next tip is to use a tool or a function of Intech called checklists. Checklists were introduced uh, earlier this year. Uh, it is another feature that's available as part of your core application. Um, it is uh, included with the, the, the main application, so there's no, um, no need to buy anything to turn checklists on, but you do have to set up security for checklists. So I'm going to show you how to do that, but if you don't see uh, checklists uh, as an option for you already under the company section, you need to make sure you have security rights to do so. Uh, we're going to create a checklist, talk about what assignments are underneath the checklist, right? The different levels or, or tasks underneath the checklist. Uh, look at some of the categories and statuses that can be set up and how you might use those. And then also you can use collaborate on checklists. So maybe I'm in step three and I'm waiting on, uh, on Steven to get something finished on step three so I can move on. So I can let the team know, hey, Steven, as soon as you get that done, let me know so I can progress this forward and, and get it over to our boss. Okay, checklists are under the company menu here, under the all section. Again, if you do not see this, you need to make sure that your user has security rights to look at these and turn these on. Again, they are part of core, but security is off by default. Uh, when this is uh, added for each user. So if I come into checklist here, first you typically would build assignments, but in, to save a little bit of time, we're gonna go right into my month end checklist here. So I've created a set of tasks for my Acumen Hospitality team to follow to be able to close the books. So let's go ahead and edit this particular checklist. I can see that it's in a particular category called month end. This is a way to group multiple checklists. If you have month end ones, if you have daily ones, if you have uh, sales checklists versus inventory checklists versus um, you know, purchasing checklists, you can just group a lot of them together to make things easier for reporting and, and viewing them. I can see that someone can own a checklist. So I do have to have an owner who can edit, maintain, update the actual checklist itself. And then down here, I can set up one or many assignments that say, okay, I need to reconcile the bank account before I can close the books. And then after that, you know, that's typically due by the fifth day of the month. Then I'll go ahead and issue financial statements uh, as a preview to the board by the 12th. Uh, then I'll reconcile accounts payable then we'll review the financial statements, then we'll print the financial statements. And you might say, oh, maybe I don't want to issue financial statements first. I want that to be actually at the end, right? Or, or you know, up here, something like that. So I can drag assignments around and then update the dates. I can assign people to individual tasks. And these are the contacts in the system where I could say, okay, Drew's got to do these. And then Joanna does the next three steps. Over here, I can build statuses where I can say, okay, I have complete and in progress. These are user defined. So if you want 12 different steps or, or statuses, you can have as, as many as you need in here. So you can click on add and add a new status or, or 20 if you want to. I can say, how, how far is this along? You know, I'm 50% complete with this. So depending on how granular you'd like to get, you can have your team say, okay, I'm, I'm updating, not only saying it's done or not, or finished or not, but I'm 50% complete if you want to. You can certainly skip that part and just kind of go to a, you know, it's either in progress or, or completed kind of status. And then I can say when I actually completed it, so I can start to track some information about when was it due, who continually hits their due date, who misses their due dates. And so, okay, is there anything that I need to patch here? So, as you know, you're all users of Intech, you know, you can attach things almost everywhere. So you can see attachments in there. And then as we said, you can use Collaborate uh, that we just looked at. You can use that on checklists as well, which is a really neat way to, uh, again, share files and, and comments on a checklist with your team. 
So again, that's a new feature, one of the many new things that Intex released this year in an earlier release. Uh, and in fact, in a later release, uh, middle of the year this year, they actually, uh, in R3, they released the ability to um, do a bit more with these assignments. So they're continuing to add more uh, functionality to this helpful month end or kind of process following uh, feature in the system. Next, we're going to talk about custom fields. So the system comes out of the box with the ability to extend what we call objects, right? An object might be a customer, a vendor, a GL account, but objects are also transactions, right? The AP bill, a customer deposit, a credit card transaction. So all of these different um, uh, data entry components, right? Or what we call objects have the ability to be extended. So I just did a quick screenshot here for a customer called Marriott International, because we're a hospitality company here, where we wanted to know a, a pick list move out. I wanted to look, uh, I wanted to have a text box. I wanted to have a, a date custom field. So these are all custom fields that I've set or created on a particular object. So we need to first choose what object we're going to extend or add to. So here, this was the customer. Uh, what type of field is it going to be? Is it a date, a pick list, a yes or no field, a, a number, a Boolean, uh, uh, just an open text field? Set the characteristics. It's a, it's a two-character text field because we want state in there or something like that, right? And then set, set well, where and how the field is displayed. So if we look at that actually in the system and how we do that, we'll go over to that customer and pull open Marriott International here. And you can see, you know, here's a pick list where I can set the values that I'd like my user to select from. And that means they can't select something that's not in the list. They can't just type in freeform like they can do with a text field for this collection note. Okay. So the way we do that is we go into more action and we go into object definition and we can create fields for those things. So we have a field called collection note, which is one of those, right? So let's go ahead and view that. The collection note, this is a wizard and you might you might expect that, right? Because if you've gone through building a customer report, if you've gone through building a financial report, you know that it's all really wizard driven. They like to walk you through the process. So I'm going to extend the customer, right? In this case, and that says, okay, what type of field is going to be? It's going to be a text field. Perfect. And then you know, what's the length of this? What's, what's the label going to be called? Well, this one's called collection notes so that my, my user knows what to put in there. And then lastly, I can say, okay, is it required? Is it hidden? Is, is it some sensitive information that I only want, uh, you know, to be imported from a system or stored in there that some of the users can't see or none of the users can see? And then I can say, okay, where do I want that to show? In this case, I put it on the additional information tab of the customer, but it could go on the main page. So in many cases, you're allowed to have up to a hundred uh, custom fields on an object. In some cases, that's combined. And, and what I mean by that is like an AP bill, right? If I put a hundred on the hundred custom fields on an AP bill, the AP adjustments I wouldn't be able to have any because it kind of puts all of those AP transactions together. So I might need to have credit notes have 10 and, and um, AP bills have, have 50, that's 60. And then on adjustments, you could have up to 40. So I know that's a little confusing, but, but if you have any questions or you're, you're really nearing 100, <laughs> let's have a conversation and, and we can help make sure you're putting them in the right place and setting them up correctly so that you can use as many as you need. We haven't had anyone hit 100 custom fields yet, but I'm sure that will happen someday. <laughs> okay, so looking at everyone on the call here, I know a lot of you are um, going to use Intact to provide some pretty 
uh, pretty good reports based on dimensions, right? One of the reasons you may have selected Intact is so that you can actually do this dimensional reporting. You can look at areas, territories, divisions, departments, regions, people, projects, customers, vendors, right? The, that's the beauty of Intact is I can take over these dimensions, call them whatever I want them to be called so that they're using my terminology. And then I can use them in reports. I can use them in dashboards. Well, that's, that's fantastic. Um, another level above that, right? And this is again, all core functionality is the ability to use and create dimension groups and dimension structures. Let me, let me kind of tell you what I mean by that. So a dimension group is a, a name for a particular set of members in a dimension. So here I might have a dimension group called South, and that includes the Florida and Texas location. Okay, a dimension group can be dynamic. A dimension group could say, give me the customers that have the top 10 balances or something like that. Uh, give me the customers that have placed the most orders. Give me the customers that are in the Florida, the state of Florida, right? Or in a particular territory or all have a particular uh, value selected in a custom field. So dimensions, you know, you can use the custom fields that you've just built that are created on a dimension to, uh, to, to use these dimension groups to apply dimension group um, uh, filtering to. Yeah. It, it, dimension groups really enable you to dynamically filter this data. So I don't have to make a list of the top 10 customers anymore. And then if, if one falls out, I put another one in. I can just create South or top 10 or bottom 10 or um, you know Florida customers or Texas customers, whatever I want to do, okay? So dimension groups are used in financial reports. They're used in financial graphs. They're used in general ledger reports, such as the journals report. Uh, maybe I wanna look at GL transactions by a customer group or a dimension group called South. So I only wanna see the GL transactions for the South territory. They're also used on dashboards as well. So, so dimension groups, right, are, are uh, a way to dynamically filter dimensions in a in a grouping, putting them together so that I can run a report for this particular set of values without having to build that each time. Dimension structures are uh, really created specifically for the purpose of adding dimensions to the rows or columns of a financial report. So the picture I have here, right, this is a dimension group that I had built but I use a dimension structure here in number one. This is a dimension structure on the report rows. So I can say, give me the south dimension structure, which happens to be made up of the dimension group south. Um, and it's going to display the two values in there in different rows. I may want to look at it like this, right? I may want to look at the dimension structure on report columns. So I can tell the financial statement, apply the, the filtering, the column filtering to using dimension structures. And I'll say, okay, give, give me Florida and Texas in their own columns. So really you build the dimension groups first to get the, the data you'd like, and then you can use dimension structures to make sure you get the output that you're looking for, whether it be on rows or columns in a financial statement. You don't need to do the structures to do the other reports we talked about, right? To do the, the GL reports, to do the customer aging reports, to, to do dashboards, right? But I do need to use dimension structures if I'm specifically looking for certain um, data in rows or columns that's related to a dimension on a financial statement. Next, we're going to talk about dimension relationships, right? We're all, we're all comfortable and probably using dimensions to tag these transactions, right? So that we get powerful, meaningful, detailed reports without having to do all this extra work. Well, 
um, they allow you, the system allows you to build relationships, linking things together, linking dimensions together. What do I mean by that? Well, here's a, a screenshot of the vendor dimension where I've built a relationship here that pulls the department dimension in. And what I did is I said, okay, when we use the FedEx vendor on an AP bill, automatically populate the department with the admin department. So I still can override it, but it's gonna automatically put that in for me. So I can use these dimension relationships between any dimension in the system, including user defined dimensions, uh, so that you can kind of assist people with data entry by pre-filling the entries. So you can say, okay, I want to auto populate the list, or maybe I want a filtered list. Maybe I want, if I select one department, I only want two um, cost centers available instead of all 12, because they, they're not applicable to the department I've selected. So let's go take a look at that. Um, this is a powerful one. Um, you do have to go into platform services to set this up. Uh, so we're not going to really go through how to build it. It's not incredibly difficult, but it's definitely something uh, we can help you do. But it is powerful because it can help your users get the right data in without having to do anything or having to do very little. So if we look at intact here, we say, OK, let's go ahead and do accounts payable and enter a new bill, right? <clears throat> and I have nothing in my data entry grid on the bottom, nothing in my department, right? But if I go ahead and select FedEx, as soon as I tab off there, it has now populated that department for all the rows. You know, I can still go in and change that, right? Um, so I can over override it, which is a setting, by the way. You may not want it to be uh, open like this and, and able to be overridden. So you can leave that off. But if I want to, I can, I can turn that on or leave that on. But it's going to default that data entry for me. And then, as I said, you might say, OK, if I pick a particular entity, or in this case, it's a property or a hotel, um, maybe I want the department list to be instead of this, you know, 50 choices, maybe maybe you get three choices because there's only three at this company or this entity. So you can build these kind of nesting uh, relationships between the dimensions as you're doing that data entry. We've seen uh, we've seen and helped customers do this with, you know, uh, customers and vendors uh, set this on the GL account. So perhaps I select a particular GL account and it fills in, you know, something specific for us. Um, and again, this 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 does work with user defined relationships as well, uh, user user defined dimension as well. So I can apply these relationships there. So. Uh, really, really powerful little tip. Um, you do have to go into platform services to build that relationship. So uh, go ahead and check out help or, or give us a call, give us a shout, give us an email if you want some help getting that set up because that's, that's really powerful. Next, we're going to talk about favorites and bookmarks. Um, this is a really not a huge one, but it's one that I think can be very helpful, especially when you're new, when you're, you're just learning Intact, you're just starting with Intact. Um, the favorites menu is really a, a is, is user specific, right? And it allows you to pull in your most used tasks, lists, reports uh, into a single menu that you can set up, reorder, reorganize any way that you'd like. So favorites, um, while they can hold kind of links to individual areas of the system, they can't hold specific records. And that's where uh, bookmarks come into play. So I might want to bookmark a specific sales order. I might want to bookmark a specific customer or a specific inventory item. That's where the two differ. Okay, But other than that, they do a similar thing in the system. So here, if we go into say accounts payable and I'm in charge of setting up vendors here, I may want to bookmark that and, and I just have to hover over it and excuse me, favorite that. <laughs> and I just have to hover over it and select the star. And I can select that for different reports if I want to, uh, including custom reports. I can do that for different transactional areas of the system. And what happens here is 
that will put that particular uh, link or that area of the system here in my favorites menu. So this is a really nice way to just say, okay, I only want a few things in here, maybe six or eight things that I do on a daily basis. I can break it down by module uh, where I can group it in, in individual areas and, and kind of save it, drag things around, or just, just really look at everything and, and kind of move them around. So I think every single demo, I put a new favorite in here. So it's not really any shorter at this point than my regular menu, but you can see if there's six or eight things you use on a regular basis, that could be very, very helpful. Okay. Now, if I, I bookmark customers or vendors, you know, as I said, you would go to the customer or vendors screen here, right? So if I click on that, I can click new, but here I am at the vendors list. Now, the bookmarks here, which are different from the favorites, although similar, would allow me to bookmark individual records if I want to. Um, I can go in here and do a similar thing where I may want to bookmark the AP bills page so I can process bills. You know, I, I can jump around the system very, very quickly. But if I was on a particular vendor here and we open up, uh, say, Cisco Foods in this case, and I want to bookmark this page, I can bookmark this specific vendor. So not only am I going to go to the vendor page, but I'll have Cisco Foods there for me that I can click on. So if we go back to home for just a second, and now I use my bookmark, I can come directly to Cisco Foods. Okay, so bookmarks can can contain a very specific record within that, that object of a vendor and favorites only would go to the vendor area, the vendor section, the reporting section that you want to be in, or the specific module that you'd like to be in. Okay, now smart rules and smart events are something that uh, is available again as part of the core application where you might want to make a a field mandatory. You might want to set a condition uh, or generate a warning or error message to say a particular department is required and I'm not allowed to, to go forward or post or submit this transaction without having that populated. You know, maybe I want um, a certain date to be filled in or date to be after or before, you know, on or before another date. So I can build these smart rules into the system. And then smart events are set up to kind of notify you when something happens, when a, a particular transaction is entered, uh, send an email out to someone, send a, send a notification out to someone that um, this order has been processed, this journal entry has been processed, this AP bill has been approved or something like that. So you can use either or both in combination. So if I said, okay, you know, my example where I want to have the AP bill here have a required uh, department. I'm not going to use FedEx because FedEx, we're defaulting that automatically, right? So I'm going to pick a different uh, vendor here and we'll just go with Cisco Foods. And we can see here that I don't have any department down here, right? So I'll finish, I'll say populate from last bill and I'm going to delete my department just to speed things up a little bit here and I could submit a new that's going to say please enter the department so this is a smart rule that I created where I said the department cannot be blank and I tell the user please enter the department correct this import port for the smart rule okay so it's a way to build kind of a custom logic into the system custom error messages to force the users to do the data entry the way you need it to, the way you want it to be done so that you get the reporting that you're expecting to have, expecting to get from the system. Okay, and then the very last thing we're going to cover today before we open it up for some questions and answers is Acumen tools, right? So Acumen tools are a suite of Excel-based um, tools that, that our team, our development team here at Acumen have built to help you with 
importing lots of data. So, <clears throat> excuse me, you can do GL transactions across multiple entities. You can do accounts payable transactions. You know, we, we could do sales orders. You can do, you know, uh, AR uh, invoices or, or order entry recurring bills if you wanted to. Now you can go into intact, right? And you can go to the company section and set up and go to the import data section. And you see that there's a template, right? For almost everything that can be imported. You can download it, uh, cut and paste your values into the CSV file, save it and go ahead and import it back in. And that works perfectly fine. Lots of clients do that. Uh, but sometimes clients say, well, I have uh, you know, journal entries that I want to import across multiple entities. So we say, okay, so maybe I'm going to do you know, the same journal entry half in, in entity 10 and half in location or entity 20. Maybe I want it to be an auto reversing entry because it's an accrual entry. Maybe I want to have a lookup here to my GL accounts in intact. Maybe I want to have a look up to uh, the project dimension here that I have in the system. So we've added a bunch of different logic to this to you know, validate that fiscal periods are active, validate that accounts are active, uh, departments are real, you know, that it's in balance, which my samples is not here. And then you could actually import or post this to the system if you have rights to do either, right? So it's going to check security as well to make sure you're able to do that. What's really nice about this, right, is it's Excel. So I could have a tab here where I'm, you know, I have a payroll uh, calculation to say, okay, let's calculate all the salaries divided by the number of days that I need to accrue for. It can come up with the, the value and just use formulas, VLOOKUPs to pull the debits and credits in. So we've helped clients do really neat things with this, you know, once they subscribe to the tool, um, you know, I've, I've seen clients with six or seven different versions of this one for some lease amortization schedules, one for payroll accruals, one for multi-company uh, imports where they'll put the, you know, the main journal entry for fixed assets here and then formulas in here that, that make the same thing across 10 entities and just push the post button. And as long as you have rights to all 10, it's gonna go in and, and make those transactions for you. So again, uh, not something you have to have, you can import out of the box, but it's something that uh, our development team has helped, uh, you know, has built kind of with clients feedback, with clients uh, input over the years to say, okay, how can we make it easier? How can we make it more efficient? How can we make it uh, faster uh, to get data into the system? So we have a whole suite of Acumen tools and it's something you can subscribe to. So uh, feel free to talk to uh, you know, your account manager or reach out to myself and, and we can get you some information on that. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and open it up to questions. Remember that it's, uh, it's, it's in read only mode. So please use the Q and A or the chat function. We'll go ahead and read them out loud and make sure we get uh, everything answered for you. Thanks, Nick. So we had a couple that came in already, so we can go ahead and get started. Um, the first question that came in says, can dimension relationships be used on user-defined dimensions? They can, they can actually. Uh, so dimension relationships could be set up for the standard, you know, customer, vendor, item, department, class dimensions, project dimensions, where I can group those. But let's say, for, um, you purchased a user defined dimension because you've used all of those and you, you need an additional dimension or 10, right? You absolutely can do the same thing there. So the answer is, is yes. Thanks. Um, the next one was, can I set preferences for other users? You can, as long as you're the admin. So if you're the admin user or you have admin rights, you can go to intact in the company section under the admin tab and users, the users list appears here. And then you could actually go into preferences for that user and set their preferences. Okay, so you have to be an admin uh, or have admin security, obviously admin rights to do that. But the answer is yes. 
Thank you. And then um, one question was, what is the best way to see the list of average transaction currency rates? Is there a report or a tab click on uh, to see the monthly rates without having to go into an entry to view, uh, go, uh, sorry, without having to go into an entry to view them? If you, you can go into, I don't have multi-currency turned on in here. Oh, yes, I do, sorry. You can go into company setup and look at your exchange rates and see the different rates. You know, I, I only have two in here, but if you had 50 rows in here, you could see each of those set up for that specific rate type from that currency. Okay, so that's, that's probably where I would go to do that. Perfect. And then um, looks like one more question came in. It says, how uh, do you turn on Collaborate? Ah, okay, good question. So Collaborate is a subscription. So you have to, if you don't see it, um, you'd want to contact your system admin and they can go into subscriptions and turn on collaborate here. Um, but it does have to be something that's turned on on the intact side. So it is something that has to be um, kind of turned on when you, when you first ordered it. Um, and if it's not, we can certainly just ask, ask intact to turn it on and then you'll be able to, to tick this box and turn it on. So if you don't see it or, or turn it on and, and it's not working, just let us know and we certainly can help you get that turned on. Okay. Right. So I think I think that's all the questions that came in. So we can go ahead and, and wrap up. So thank you all again for joining us today. Um, if you do have any additional questions, then please reach out to your assigned account manager or email us at am at acumenfl.com or you can give us a call at 407-965-2411. Uh, we will have this recording uh, by the end of the week, so please, again, reach out to your account manager, or you can follow us and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And from there, you can see all our previous recordings. Um, in addition, our next webinar would be on Wednesday, December 15th, and the topic we'll be covering is stage intact budgeting and planning. Uh, so please be on the lookout for invitations uh, tomorrow and next week. And so with that said, I believe that's all we have for you today. So thank you all for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you on our next webinar Wednesday.